Hello there, and welcome back to another C Sharp Intermediate tutorial with the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we learn about third person camera behavior. This tutorial continues on the previous tutorial, first person camera controls. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I do recommend you watch that one first, because the third person camera sort of builds on that first person camera script and it extends it so that we have this nice third person camera behavior. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a scene similar like this. We still use the mouse to move our camera controller around, but different from the first person perspective, of course, is the camera offset, as well as this really cool feature that if our camera would be really close to a wall, then we automatically shift along the wall using a raycast. And if we are too close to our object or to our character controller, we switch automatically to the first person controller back. So how does our scene look? I've opened up the start third person camera scene. And as you can see, I've already selected the third person character controller, which has some default scripts already set up, mostly because of the previous tutorial, which is the character component. Again, this is so that we see this pinkish rigid body here, which is a special kind of rigid body with some extra properties for character controllers. There's also the player movement script, which allows our character to actually move around the scene by pressing the WASD keys. And we have a child mesh uh, entity that contains some basic primitives, uh, a couple of cylinders to represent the body and the arms of our player. And then we have a pivot, which is the point where our first person camera is going to reside and is going to be rotating around. And then the camera is then a child of that pivot. And the only thing that's different there is that the 180 degrees have been uh, rotated already, basically the same as the previous tutorial. So what do we need to do in order to turn this into a third person camera view? Well, just like with this pivot, it is useful to have a secondary pivot to control the third person perspective. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to create a new entity and I'm calling this third person pivot. I'm going to make that a child of the original pivot and our camera is going to be a child of the third person pivot. Let's make sure that the third person pivot is at the exact same position and rotation as the pivot above it, which I guess we could also call the first person pivot. So really nothing changes that much. We just added some extra entities to our, well, person character hierarchy so that we have more objects to apply control to that particular object. Now let's create a script. I'm going to go to code, third person camera. Let's make a sync script. Let's call this third person demo. And let's add that to our third person character entity. Now let's hop on over to the code. Now, since our script is so similar, like the first person demo script, we're going to copy a lot of lines from the first property, the mouse speed, all the way to the entire update method. Let's copy that and copy that all the way inside the body of our third person demo. This is where we start off. We do have to include the character component, which resides in the stride.physics namespace. But other than that, we are good to go. So the first thing that we need to do here is add a reference to that third person pivot. So let's copy the camera pivot variable here. And let's call this third person pivot. Copy this line. And of course, we need to find the correct child entity here, which we called third person pivot. Now that we've retrieved that, let's look at the logic of rotating the third person pivot. Our third person pivot is going to be positioned at the exact location as the first person pivot. 
So we're going to set its position. And that is actually equally to vector 3, 0. Because it's a child of the first person pivot, it doesn't have a value at the x, y, or z other than 0. It should be exactly the same. Then we're going to define, then we need to define how far away this object needs to be positioned away from that first person camera, from that first person pivot. And let's do that with something called an offset. So we can say camera third person pivot transform dot position. And now we're going to add an offset. So let's use a variable here that we haven't created. And let's call this camera offset. And let's make this camera offset as a public property in our script. Let's use a vector three for this. And for our use case, we're just going to say it's not going to change on the X axis, not on the Y axis, but we do want to move it backwards. So we are going to set a value of minus three. Of course, we do need to use a vector three type here. Now you can imagine that in some games you have an over the shoulder look, which means that you could offset the X position X axis a little bit to the left or to the right, and then you can swap those in games, but that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. But, but you could use the X axis to do so. So again, back, we apply that camera offset to our position. And in this case, it's going to be positioned backwards from our camera. And basically we already have a working third person camera. So let's give this a shot. So as you can see, we are moving around. We do not have that cone mesh as we have in the uh, final example, but that should be okay. So we can start moving around and our camera is actually working just fine. But of course, there's the big problem that our camera is skipping through all of the geometry and we cannot see our character controller at the moment. So let's fix that next. In order for us to determine whether this camera offset is actually a correct offset, we can make use of a ray cast that sends out a ray from the first person pivot towards the third person pivot. And for this, we do need to have a reference to the simulation object. We're going to make a variable called simulation. And then in our start method, we're going to say simulation is, we have to say this dot get simulation. And since our scene contains physics properties or physics components, I should say, like a rigid body or a static collider, our physics simulation has been initialized and it will get this simulation back through this variable. And now we can start performing this raycast. But before we do, let's first make sure that our, our third person pivot position has actually been updated because we're going to require its world position. So I'm going to say camera third person pivot dot transform dot update world matrix. By doing so, we're going to update the world position, which normally would have been updated at the end of our frame. But we are going to need that world position now for the ray cast. So that is why we're doing this. Now let's make two variables, raycast start, and obviously raycast end. And that start is going to be the first person pivot. And we call that simply camera pivot dot transform dot world matrix dot translation vector. And now we can say the third person camera pivot dot transform dot world matrix dot translation vector. That is the global position or the world position for the end of our raycast. We're going to say if simulation dot raycast, and we're going to fill in that raycast start, raycast end. And then we create a variable which stores the end result in a hit result variable. And if we have a 
a raycast result. So if we have hit some sort of static collider or other rigid body, then we actually want to uh, do something new with that position that we have hit. But we don't always want to do this. We only want to do this if the hit position is really close to our character. If it would be really far away, then we want to leave our third person camera position alone. So let's calculate that distance. We can do this by saying vector three dot distance, and then we provide the raycast start to the raycast hit point. Now let's make an if statement and we say if hit distance, if that is higher than our minimal hit distance, which is a variable we'll still have to declare. So let's declare that minimal hit distance up here as a public property. So we're going to say public float minimal hit distance. And that's going to be an initial value of one, which we can always change back into our editor. And if that hit distance is larger than that minimal hit distance, we do want to place that third person, that camera third person position at that specific spot. So we can do that by saying transform dot position dot Z because we only want to affect the Z axis here. And now let's figure out a way what that actual hit position is. So what we can do is say, let's do the hit distance here. So let's say that from a first person perspective, and we raycast all the way back, and it should be at a distance of minus three, but uh, let's say 0 0.5 units inwards or, or going backwards, we've hit a wall, then we want to position that object at the 0 0.5 hit point, if you will. And to make sure that we're not placed that we're not placed exactly at the same spot as the edge of the wall, we do want to subtract a small value from this. So let's say 0 0.1 F just to be sure. And that is going to be our actual Z position for our camera. Now, if we are really close to our character controller, then we do not want to be positioned at this hit result position. We want to posi position back at the actual first person position. So we can say transform dot position, and then we're basically using that new vector three that we have here. We can reset that again. So we are placed at the exact same spot as the first person pivot. Okay, let's give this a spin. Let's fire up the third person camera. And if we move to a wall, notice how our camera slowly transitions to this or actually instantly transitions to a spot closer to our to our object. There is almost no clipping to that wall behind us. But if we were really close, then we should be swapping to a first person view. And as soon as our camera peeks over the edge, we're swapping back to that third person view with a full camera offset. And there you have it. That is a basic third person character controller implementation using the stride game engine. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you around for the next tutorial where we talk about navigation.